Hello and welcome back to Highlighting the Sword of Verdandi. And uh, by the way, the shield is lying here because I thought I was gonna work on little studs holding those straps together. But I, as with these studs, I think I'm gonna go the opposite way there. They, they've been base coated, but they need. I probably need to shade them before I highlight them because of the way they are constructed. And I'm going for the, I don't know if it's the third or fourth highlight, I forget. It's the Naker, uh, it's, it, it's, it's pronounced Naker, I checked. It's pure Naker at this point. And it's starting to get really bright. And with all the layers put onto it by now, um, the the buildup of highlights means that I'm starting to reach the point where new highlights don't uh, have to I don't ha don't have to put on so many layers anymore. It's the, the buildup of paint underneath means I can get the brightness I need relatively quickly, which means. The, the 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 highlighting is going faster and faster. It's speeding up. And I think I will now add some white into the maker for the next highlight. That makes it even lighter. Maybe that was a bit much. I'll go back down. Let's see what this looks like here at the tip. It, it's really hard to tell when first putting on whether it's uh, how much brighter it actually is because as I, as I often say all paint looks brighter when you first put it on. And it becomes less so when it dries. Anyway, um, I, I don't think I want to go all the way to the pure white on the normal highlights. I want to save that for the edging. Uh, of, well, of the edges, of course. Uh, just smooth that transition out a bit. Went back to the previous highlight for a second. Pick up the new one again. And it, it's good that I've got two sides to the blade here because the way I'm working I can I can highlight I can put on the highlight on one side, turn it over, work on the other side, and by the time I've applied it to the other side, the first side will have dried. That's practical. I think it's enough of that. We'll add a little bit more. This highlight is 50% of the previous highlight and 50% just white. So we're Starting, I think, to get to the end of the highlighting phase. Now I'm just doing not dots, but little lines here in the middle of the previous highlight uh, area. I'm just drawing in a line uh, as per last video. I was talking about how. 
I want it to shrink the highlights to the middle of the blade. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying not to cover the entire um, width, but focus it. And like so. Now, looking at it through on camera, you can probably see the delineation of these lines pretty clearly. These last couple of highlights have a starker difference to the surroundings. Uh, but the eye doesn't quite see it that way. Uh, uh, but I will smooth out these transitions a little with the previous highlight because that, that was a bit much you have to sometimes go a little bit back and forth like this see here that that's a little too abrupt let's try a little bit like that Mm, looks better. Now we're moving to the dots phase. Luckily I have some of the previous highlight left on my palette. So I can just sort of almost wet blend in the edges of it here. You know what, uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to just put in a spot of the pure white in the middle here and see how it looks. Looks extremely bright when I put it on. We'll see. Uh, I can always go back. I probably will. After I've, it's difficult to tell what the final balance will be when I've only put on highlights and no shades. So once I've done the shading, I might have to go back and, you know, revisit the highlights. Gonna smooth out that transition there. But yeah, I think that will be it for the time being as far as highlights go. I'm gonna leave it like that and mix up some shade colors and come back to you when I've so done time that. for some shading and I'm gonna start using this darker gray, the anthracite gray. It's worth pointing out that these scale colors, when they're new at least, need a good deal of shaking to mix them up in the model. They do separate a little bit, but I'm used to that from working with a lot of Vallejo paints. Uh, I can show you the progression here. This here was the graphite, the base color. This here is the knacker, and this is the white, and this is the new anthracite gray. And you can see little puddles here around where I've mixed up various uh, intermediary shades between these colors. And I, I only mixed as much as I needed, so I've used them all up. And what I do when, uh, for example, now that I need a shade, I can take a little bit of it and 
pick this color here, and then I pick up a little bit this color here, and I mix them, them up to see if I get something darker. And I pick up some water that I've got here, and I can thin that out. And see, this is slightly darker than this. And there's quite a, not much mixed up here, but considering how small the areas are, this might well, very well be enough. And let's see if I can apply the first shade here. And will this be in focus? It, I think it looks like it might be. So let's carefully, now I'm going to do the opposite portions of it here. So this part needs shading. And the thing that happens now is I have to be more careful. When I was doing the highlighting, I it didn't really matter if I spilled over into the areas that were going to be shaded later because I'm going to paint over it. However, now that I'm shading, I need to be really careful not to spill into the areas that will be highlighted. So, painting with a lot of care here. You see that's darkening. And trying to stay within the lines here. And trying to be really subtle about this because if, if I go too dark with the shading, that might look really bad. And this first shade, as you can probably tell, is not very different. The base color, it's just deepening it a little bit, sort of almost just re-establishing the base color where it needs to be um, let's do an experiment let's just I'm gonna take some pure anthracite here and I'm gonna paint these studs I'm gonna shade stud and I'm going to shade this stud and I'm going to take shield and I'm going to shade this stud this one and then I'm going to take a highlight color I'm going to take the knacker I think and just dot that in. Now the shield nobody's ever going to see, but let's see what happens when I that's too much on the brush. Just a little dive it there. And there. Yeah, needs more. Let's go even lighter here to get a proper metallic look. I think I need some white. There we go. Because otherwise this these studs just look like the same as the, the, the gray on the cloth. But now we got a high contrast between dark and light. You might want to put in a mid-tone in between. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. 
Looks okay. So, let's go back to the actual sword. Where was I? Oh yes, I was painting in this shade. And yeah, these patches look a bit, it looks like, like blotches of shade and highlight. And this is because I don't have the lines, the, that is the, um, the dividing lines painted in yet, which will come at the very end. Before that, it's, it might be difficult to understand the definition of this. So let's add a bit more of the anthracite. It's moving kind of rapidly to a darker shade. Mm. This needs to be deepened. And here. See, it's getting a bit darker, but it's still not... I mean, if I compare it to the box art again, they've gone almost black in, in the shade and white in the highlights. And my highlights are pretty much that bright, but the shades, if I want to get anywhere near this, the shade needs to get a lot deeper. So we're going to do a few layers more of this. And, and I'm already doing what I started doing in the highlights. Namely, I'm putting the shade like here in the, in, in the middle portion of it, not Splurging it all over. And I think, how far are we from pure anthracite? One more shade and then we will be, uh, th this is still a mix. But for the next shade, I will need to go pure anthracite gray. I think, and that's probably as far as we're going to get in this video, in this episode. I will keep shading with the next color, which is the Abyssal Blue, which will really deepen it. But that will be a future episode, I believe. Again, the darker colors are covering better than the lighter ones. So, <clears throat> I... Yeah, I, I, I have a bit too much of this color on my palette, but Hopefully it'll stay useful for some other painting projects. And here we go with the pure anthracite. And I'm just drawing in very little of it at this point. Did I say that the darker tones seem to be covering better than the lighter ones? If not, I can say it now. But that's normal. That's that's usually the case in most paints, in most paint ranges. I only have a few exceptions, like for example, the, uh, what's it called? The dark green from Vallejo Game Color, which is absolute rubbish. Um, but otherwise, okay, I'm thinking we're probably by now pretty close to the 20 minute mark. So there's going to be, have to be a third video 
for finishing up the shading and then drawing in the um, um, the outlines, the 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 um, the edges, and cleaning up. Oh, damn. I'm trying to fix a bit of a rough transition there. Uh, looks okay. There will be some of this back and forth, trying to correct things. Uh, yeah. So, I'll see you next episode. And until then, I'm Dr. Young, signing off.